fantastic. Thank you guys, cool. appreciate that. That was great fun. That was really good. Nice. This morning, in this video, I am gonna be doing some wildlife photography, but I'm not gonna be in a Jeep. Today, I'm gonna to be in a hot air balloon. Now, I have been in a hot air balloon before and taken wildlife pictures from the sky, but that doesn't mean it makes it any easier. It's quite difficult because you're always moving and you can't stop and change composition. You go where the wind takes you. Also, the other thing is I'm gonna be trying to bring you along with me. So I'm gonna be filming myself doing this. It's quite difficult in the balloon. You've got the burners that go and they're very loud. Uh, I'm also quite limited to space, so I can't really move around a lot. And there isn't anywhere for me to place my camera down. So, you know, we're gonna see. <laughs> this might turn out great or it might turn out pretty hopeless. What, uh, what gear do I need? Uh, perfect. Yep. You always wanna pack light when you're in a balloon. Right, let's go. You never want to leave your tent up open when you're in the bush, so. Rule number one. and away. It was at this point that I realized I'm too much of a chicken to talk in front of the camera with people all around me. But we started off quite low and flew over a lovely herd of buffalo. They didn't seem too impressed. Photography at this time is quite difficult as the sun hasn't risen yet and you are still moving quite quickly in a balloon and having a fast shutter speed is key. Great for this. Look straight down over yeah. the side of the basket. Perfect perspective. As you can tell, I was pretty awkward in that piece to camera, but what I was saying is a 70 to 200 is a perfect lens as it's very versatile. You can zoom in and out, which is great. And looking straight down over the basket gives you a unique bird's eye perspective. And it was just after this that I grabbed my first image of a hippo. The views from the balloon are fantastic, especially over the Mara River. It's hard not to take those wide angle images, but because I had a 70 to 200 on, I was forced to look a little closer. That's when I noticed these three lone trees and their long shadows. I love the way the sunrise and the fog 
acted as a golden blanket across the plains. I know it's not a wildlife image, but let me know what you think. Yeah, got some monkeys. No, it's monkeys, sorry. Yeah. It's baboons. Like baboons. Baboons, sorry. There was one shot that I got where a branch wasn't in his face. So I had to make sure I got that image quickly. And a fast shutter speed reduces any motion blur that might happen. Good old baboons. Try and be creative. Use the shadow of the balloon and frame that up with your subject to get a unique, different feel to the image. It's not every day you're in a balloon and it's quite hard to photograph it while you're in it. So using the shadow is the way to do it. Heard of Eland up ahead. See if I can get a photo. go into landing position. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get your people ready for the worst case scenario. All right, I'll give you a license today. You first, <laughs> we have landed. What a flight. Unbelievable. I don't know if this is going to turn out as a good video and you learn anything about taking pictures in a hot air balloon. Quite difficult and I was pretty nervous talking in front of people but still I thoroughly enjoyed it and if you ever get the chance to go in a hot air balloon you've got to come here to the Masai Mara with Mervyn and David. Fantastic. Thank you guys, appreciate that, that was great fun, that was really good. Nice. <laughs>